In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the great wonder of the Incarnation, the second person of the Trinity, the Word of God, which was present at the creation of the universe becomes human. He takes on our flesh and our blood for the purpose of our redemption. So as we celebrate this stupendous mystery and wonder with all its promise of eternal life, we call to mind our sin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our Christmas Gloria.
Gracious God, for the glad tidings of peace, the good news of salvation. Your word became flesh, and we have seen his glory. Let the radiance of that glory enlighten the lives of those who celebrate his birth. Reveal to all the world the light no darkness can extinguish, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sit and listen to the scriptures. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who heralds peace, brings happiness, proclaims salvation, and tells Zion, your king, your God, is king. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices, they shout for joy together, for they see the Lord face to face as he returns to Zion. Break into shouts of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord is consoling his people, redeeming Jerusalem. The Lord bears his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is... All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All the All ends, the ends, of, ends the of the earth, earth have, have seen, seen the, the salvation, salvation of, of our, our God. God. The Lord has made known his salvation has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. All, All the ends, the ends of, the, of earth the earth have seen, seen the salvation, salvation of our God. God. Sing the psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the sound of music, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Acclaim the King, the Lord. All, All the, the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the salvation, salvation of our God. God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his son, the son that he has appointed to inherit everything and through, and through whom he made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of his nature, sustaining the universe by his powerful command. And now that he has destroyed the defilement of sin, he has, gone, he has gone to take his place in heaven at the right hand of divine majesty. So he is now as far above the angels as the title which he has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, you are my son, today, you are my son. today I have become your father, or I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being, but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men, a light that shines in the darkness, a light that darkness could not overpower. The Word was the true light that enlightens all, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to all who believe in the name of him who was born not out of human stock or urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The Word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory the glory that is his as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please sit down. I have three of them. They don't happen all the time, but when they do, they're a bit like this. In the first one, I am clinging onto a plank of wood about the size of this lectern. The plank of wood is perched precariously between one mountain summit and another. Either side of me, a vast, empty void. Eventually, I fall off. In the second one, I've been invited to preach at a very, very important service in a very, very important place. I climb the steps of the pulpit, which is eight or ten feet above contradiction. 
I look at my text, I realize it's the wrong one. I went to a university where to go to be examined, you had to dress up as if you were going to dinner. Here's the evidence. You could admire it later. I sit in the examination hall. I turn the paper over. I realize there's not a single question I can answer. I've read no books. I've been to no lectures. I've attended no tutorials. In each case, I wake up. These, my friends, are my anxiety dreams and probably I should go and see a therapist. Now, Father Johnny Foster was vicar of St. Mary Magdalene's in Paddington Green and his anxiety dream was this one. He uh, gets to the end of Midnight Mass, as I did last night. He goes to the high altar. He collects the bambino on the cushion. And he takes the cushion round and round and round the church. The choir are going demented. They can't think of any more carols to sing. The organist, thank you, Neil, is overwhelmed with the necessity of improvisation. Father Johnny Foster cannot find the crib. It is not there. But my friends, that is a parable of what happened when the Lord Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, came to this earth. You heard it, the most chilling phrase in the whole of Scripture. He came to his own, and his own received him not it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. The love of God made visible flesh and blood and his own, that is us, received him not. And let's face it, he didn't really fit in, did he? his ideas, his theology, repugnant to most people. His friends, the lowest of the low, no, surely not. We want people who live in ivory palaces, not prostitutes and tax collectors. So his ideas were wrong, his friends were wrong, and he surely must have been wrong because they put him on a cross. Ah, there's a three-letter word in the prologue of St. John's Gospel. Not a four-letter word, a three-letter word. And my God, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference for you and me in eternity. That word is, but... All that was true, they didn't want him, he didn't fit in, his ideas were wrong, his friends were wrong. But to those who receive him, he gives power to become the children of God. The children of God. We are here this morning, my brothers and sisters, thank you for being here, to do nothing less than to celebrate our destiny. Because our destiny is to be with God and 
to reflect back to God that beauty and truth and wonder and love that God is within himself. So happy Christmas. That said, let us proclaim the faith we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray now to our Heavenly Father. Rejoicing in the birth of our Lord and Saviour, we pray that the Church may continually be reborn. Let us share the humility of the manger, the adoration of the shepherds, and the love of the Holy Family in the light of him who is the light of the world. Pity and pardon this world of conflict, deaf to the message of peace. Bring harmony where there is strife between nations and where people are divided by suspicion and bitterness. Heal those who have no peace within themselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. We pray for the families and friends with whom we celebrate this happy time. Give us true love, unselfish desires and grateful hearts. We pray especially for the children, for their unclouded joy at this time. Create in us a pattern of human love that would lead them to the love of God who sent his son as a little child. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who cannot feel the joy of Christmas through the burden of sickness, bereavement, or other distress. We pray especially today for Anne, Claire, Finley and family, Julia and Jill and Tony, Marjorie, David, Jane and Julia, Joanne, Cecily, Cara, Maria, Teresa, and Derek and Beryl Hancock. Comfort with your presence all who are separated at this time from those they love. 
bring the light of Christ into their afflicted lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on the departed, who, having shared with Christ their human birth and infancy, have shared with him also the death of the body. Remember especially that this time Tim Valentine, Dennis Essex, Anne Harris, and Doreen Underhill, and for those whose years mind occurs now, Kane Mitchell, Edward Heal, Audrey Naomi Coles, Patricia Dorothy Ellen Parsons, and Martin John Coles. Make their joy complete in the kingdom where there is neither birth nor death, but abundant life without end. And in a moment of silence, we bring our own petitions to God. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we celebrate the peace in a COVID-friendly kind of way. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. And the offertory carol is number 39, O Little Town of Bethlehem, in the carol booklets. 39.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh, glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple, our patron, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, Keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth.
Let us pray. God our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. We sing carol 84, Hark the Herald. Once again, I want to wish you a very happy Christmas. Thank you very much for being here. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Holy Family, it being a Sunday, and we do this all again at half past ten, and if you come, you get about 40,000 years off purgatory. <laughs> and what better incentive could there be? It's lovely to see you all. Uh, Monday is the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. And whilst we've transferred our principal patronal festival to the 6th of May, nevertheless, it's a significant day. And on Monday, as ever, there is Mass at 6 p.m. And I can promise you a gin and tonic in the vicarage after Mass, if you come. <laughs> now, the solemn blessing for Christmas Day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that light upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation 
gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you to dwell deep within you and give you joy this Christmas and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, proclaim the Word made flesh. Thanks be to God.